Hey folks, welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. It's September and that means musky time on Leech Lake in northern Minnesota. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Yes, uh, mid to late September into October means musky time for us. And one thing I wanted to ask you, Pete, over the years, you just seem to love September. What is it about this month that's so good? Well, first of all, it's uh, the water's cooler where we don't have to worry about the fish from a releasing and handling standpoint. And second of all, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's the funnest time of year to me for people who really like to catch them casting. Not all the fish, John, but a lot of the fish that were out in the open water during the summer, deeper ranges in general, will come in shallow. So to a certain extent, you've got a better opportunity at a shallow bite. And in some cases, you've got some fish that were living out there that are coming up shallow for the first time. I've always speculated, I don't know, I don't give them a little quiz and say, hey, are you a lot dumber <laughs> because you were in 40 feet of water all summer and now you're here? But I just, you know, I think that's part of it. They might not see fast burn bucktails or some of the different baits that we do this time of the year, obviously top water being one of them. So it's a, the other neat thing, every bait works, right? Yeah. It's top water time, it's bucktail time, crankbait, jerkbait, soft plastic. So. Well, uh, as I mentioned, we're on Leech Lake and I, I, I think probably the last 20, 25 years, you and I have really loved coming over here in September. Oh, it's always fun. And well, you got to come see the big Swedes. You right? do. Yeah, you do. It's just one of those things you got to do. And then we got new young friends. We have to have new young friends because we put our young friends in the front of the boat. And that's Riley, our ice fishing buddy, who's also a musky guy. Yeah, that's right. And if anybody needs to throw anything that's really heavy, like a pound, two pound, you know, really hard pulling yeah. bucktails, you have the young guy do yeah. that and we watch. Yeah, it'll be fun, right? Yeah. 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 Hey folks, let's show what we're using and how we're using it. All of that coming up right after this. For muskie and pike, Seaguar Threadlock is my favorite braid. It's a 16 strand hollow core, very tight weave, very round, does not dig into the spool, amazing sensitivity and feel, and you literally will grow old waiting for this stuff to fray. The longevity is amazing. It's the absolute best braid I've ever used. For more information, Seaguar.com. Folks, here's your chance to win a 2023 Wolverine X2 XTR from Yamaha. One lucky winner takes home this incredible machine. This side-by-side -side has maximum comfort, power steering, factory installed winch, and a full dump box. Enter today by going to GillespieFishing.com, click on the Wolverine X2 XTR sweepstakes banner. This sweepstakes is brought to you by your Yamaha dealer and Fleet Farm. Meet Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyers. John, you, you've got to know me. I mean, I'm a really passionate person. Every one of my staff is, every one of my team is. Um, you know, we are passionate about what we do. Helping somebody out, uh, protecting them, doing everything we can to help tell their story, to make sure they're treated fairly with integrity and with respect, and get a fair resolution, whatever that is for the client. I mean, that's extremely important to us. That's really all that matters. Hey, welcome back, folks, as we talked about up on Leech Lake. And uh, our host in Longville, Minnesota, as usual, is our buddy, the Big Swede. And Rusty, it's not just Leech up here. There's a whole bunch of lakes that have good musky fishing. You know, John, if you look, if you threw a dart at a map on Longville, there's more fishable musky water within 20 miles of Longville than anywhere else in the state. And you like September, too. I love September. The fish like to eat, and they're not so hard to catch. And like Pete said, they hit everything. <laughs> How big was that? 38 maybe. It was kind of hot there. So. Well, Riley, we spent four hours fishing last night. Uh, we saw a fish or two, but had no biters. And uh, got up this morning, got out here on the water about 8 o'clock. And it is what time right now? 1 o'clock? 1 o'clock. And tell the folks. Yeah, it was a very slow morning, but we made a big change. We were shallow this morning. 
wasn't working out for us obviously and we made a change of some deep weeds and first weed bed Pete moved a low 40 incher next weed bed we moved a high 30 and then we just had a walleye bite the creek chub so so we got a chance yep we got a chance yep. it was looking pretty dull this morning but yeah we made the right call hey Pete this is what these young guys call what a grinder Yes, yes, this is grinding. I'm not exactly sure what's grinding. I guess just your constant casting and hoping. And, but yeah, it's a grind yeah. right now. When fishing's slow like this, uh, and especially when you get into late September, October, live bait works. But I've never seen a, a musky bait like this. It's so small, but yeah. that works? Oh, it works very good. We catch a lot of real nice fish, 48, 50 inches on it. And it seems to be like when you get your real low periods, that these are gonna be what pull out your bites for you. And then you get the bonus 28 inch walleyes mixed in as well, which is always fun. And what is this called? That's a creek chub. A creek chub, and you just hook it through the top of the mouth. Yep, and then that minnow, it, you basically let it do the work for you. Just like a big sucker, it's when a fish starts tracking it, that minnow is gonna start freaking out, and that's what tr triggers the bite. Oh, okay, you brought them up to the top, did you see what it is? Yeah, it's like a 25, 26 inch walleye. No kidding. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. All right, I'm gonna hit him. All right. <coughs> oh, oh, swing and a miss, ball two. So what do you want to, you want to tighten up on them, right? Yep, you tighten up on them, kind of feel what they're doing. You hope they go on a run, and then when they settle out again, that's when they're flipping that minnow, and that's when you set the hook. Okay, so they're flipping it in his mouth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right? okay. First they T-bone it, and they kind of swim around with it for a little while. But you just, once they stop, if you have a fish sitting there for a while, you count to 10 and you give them a rip. Yeah, way to go, we got something alive. <laughs> and here he is, here he is. We got something alive. What is it? It is, I don't know. Oh, it's a beautiful walleye. Oh, walleye. There we go. Look at that walleye. That's the one, I'll scoop them up. You just want to grab them? Yeah. Now that's the cool thing about using those small baits is you said you have access to the different species and they work great for muskies, you know? Let's see what this walleye looks like here. Riley? Oh, that's a that's a nice fish. Yeah, yeah that's a Actually, nice one. Actually, it is a nice one. And I want to mention, you, you guide for the walleyes too, don't you? Yeah, yep, I do quite a few walleye trips too. Muskie's my main thing, but yeah. I fill in with these. Oh, that's beautiful, buddy. It's a beautiful fish, probably 25, 26 inch there. Yeah, and uh, if the muskies continue to not bite, this may be our target. Yeah, right? <laughs> nice job, somebody. though, those little chubs, huh? Yep. Whatever. Ooh, got one. Hey! Oh. <laughs> Roll. Hey, fish on! Rusty, rusty, got rusty! One, got one, he says. All right, buddy, that hit uh, right he, by the side of the he boat. He cracked it right at the boat, That Johnny. was awesome, buddy. He's not a monster? No, but I'll jump. tell you what. That's a lot of casts for one muskie, isn't it? All right, buddy. What is that, about a big 34? Probably, 32, yeah. 34. All right. Well, it is a muskellunge. It is a muskie. And I'll tell you what, folks. A lot of casts, Pete, went into that fish. There was a lot of casts, yeah. We actually, I raised two smaller ones, or a little bit bigger, but a few minutes ago, but. Well, we gotta tell the folks, so, and then we yeah. talked about it a few minutes ago, and that was about seven hours ago. It's been a long, <laughs> arduous process, hasn't it? Yes, uh, as they say, a grind. Yeah. Well, that's what we always say, though. You never know when Mus Mr. Muskie's gonna make your day, right? Oh, that's for sure. That one came out of nowhere. What happened on that suite? You know, John, I was bringing it in. I was working that head on her, twitch, 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 and all of a sudden out of nowhere, this thing just unloaded. It jumped halfway past Riley in the front of the boat before I even could get to free spool, and the fight was on. It's not a big fish, but it's a fun one. You know, we spent a lot of years here in September and, and done exceptionally well over the years. This is a surprise to do. It's we a real surprise. We've got good weather. we got perfect time of year. The leaves are changing. We're in great spots. We don't have much pressure, but it's, it's musky fishing. You never know when he's going to make your day. Now that is a They're teens. pretty. Aren't that is they, a beautiful you know, fish. When they're yeah. young like that, Pete, they, the spots are really defined. The spots are just brilliant and defined. Yeah, it really is neat. And, and you can see it's in the tail and the, and the fins as well, those spots. It really is kind of cool. That is a beautiful well, fish. Well, thanks, buddy. We appreciate that. Yeah. Man. Hey, he made our day. He made our he day. He made our day. No, but you go, you know, you, we've been fi musky fishing a lot of years, and you go through days like this, man, where it's just nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, yeah, that's, I, I, yeah, definitely musky fishing. But you don't really expect at this time of the year, 
on this body of water with technically the conditions aren't the greatest right now but overall today I would say the conditions were you know up there seven eight I mean we had clouds we had wind tried a bunch of different stuff it was really pretty surprising so it's unusual I think that we had as tough a day as we've had so far. Well, there's a couple hours left. Yeah, we're still out here. So what, what did you catch yours on, Rusty? You know, it's a little headhunter, John, and I've been just twitching it, twitching it, reel it forward, and twitch, 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 trying to make it look injured. You know, it's a, the fish are a little neutral and a little negative, so I've been trying to make this look like it's dying. And that's got that noisemaker in it there. It does, it has that little noisemaker from Livingston, it's pretty awesome triggers fish when nothing else will. And you let that pause once in a while? I let it pause, a couple snaps, reel it, let it pause, a couple snaps, reel it, and it, it does get negative fish to hit. We were fishing Leech Lake out of Longville, Minnesota, an eight hour drive from Milwaukee, nine hours from Chicago, and three hours from Minneapolis. Live imaging shows you what's below in real time with edge to edge clarity and no gaps in coverage. All so you can turn must watch detail into non stop action. Only from Humminbird. Folks, you, you see us talking about the Johnson Pump washdown kit every week. On a charter boat, pontoon boat, any boat, it's really a great thing to have. Now, you guys get a lot of blood on your hands, we so do. what do you do? John, this washdown pump right here that Johnson just spray it right off and obviously we got quite a bit of blood on the back deck and this thing will take care of it. So you actually use it while we're out here fishing so the customers don't get blood and everything on them. Exactly. And again that's the Johnson Pump Washdown Kit. You yep. love it? Love it. Eagle Claw, the pick of the week. The Aberdeen Hook Assortment Box has every hook you need, size and color. Eagle Claw, the only hook made right here in the USA. Musky, musky, musky! Yeah. All right, Pete. I am so glad you chose to come back to this spot, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Two muskies in 10 minutes after 12 hours without a bite. Isn't it amazing? Yes, it is. Well, let's see what size we got here, Pete. It didn't look big, no. but it, it's decent. It's a nicer fish, anyway. It looked big at first. Ooh, there he is. That's, that's a decent that, fish. Bad. Yeah. That, hey, after what happened today, I will take this fish. Yes, you will. Oh, that's awesome, though, buddy. What was that on? That's on that glider. I started throwing that. It, it's called a Warlock. Uh -huh. my, my buddy Daryl Eibauer makes it. Okay, and, here uh, he comes. I did, I did raise a couple other fish. Nicely done, Swede, thank Good you. Good job. Yeah, I'm sorry, Pete, that was on a glider? Yeah. And who makes it? Uh, my buddy, Daryl Nybauer. It's called the Warlock, bit and tackle. But uh, sometimes when things are real tough, you know, Riley and I were talking earlier that nothing else is working a glider when we're fishing shallow stuff like this, generally. Yeah, you got him there, buddy? I got him, I got him. All right. I got a, I got a bad knuckle though where I, <laughs> Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 38, 31. 39 around there. Yeah. And again, the spots, uh, the Leech Lake strain is just a beautiful fish They're in my pretty. opinion. They really are. You know, and that fish meant business, didn't he? Oh, I'll tell you what, you know, after some pretty lame, slow follows, all of a sudden that one whacked it. That was a cool hit. You know, I'm uh, 73, and how old are you? 23. Are you tired? A little bit. That's a long day, wasn't it, buddy? Long day. Yeah, but we got the two muskies, and you know, we got a half a day tomorrow, and uh, you got to work tomorrow, so you're not going to be with us, but we're going to have your dad. Yep, he's going to come out with you guys. Tomorrow. Your dad, Jason, I call him Mr. 11-inch bluegill. He <laughs> got an 11-inch bluegill with us last winter. And a big rock bass. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> it was a fun day. Good to see you, buddy, and yeah, I'll you see too. you soon. And, and Pete, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people realize the pressure I put it under you guys trying to get four or five muskies in two and a half days it's not easy all the time is it well that's true it it doesn't seem like pressure when they bite better but on a day like today the you know the pressure does kind of add up 
Well, we got about a seven hours tomorrow. Let's try and pull another one out. And uh, we got, uh, like I said, Riley's dad, Jason, with us. And he's a good musky angler, too. Yes, he is. And we're going to go out and we're going to catch him. Jason's right. going to get us on him. And Rusty's not going to be with us. No. We lose the Swede. But we he's lose cooking Riley. Johnsonville's tonight. Oh, ho, ho. there we go. You know, folks, one of the reasons I love coming to Longville, Minnesota, is I got my buddy Rusty, who is a top-notch chef. Now, last <laughs> night we got back late, and uh, we had the Better with Cheddar's beef. The beef and cheddars, they're incredible. And what was really nice, you put them on the grill last night, uh, they're pre-cooked. They're pre-cooked, it was quick. Yeah, and we ate a bunch of them. We ate a bunch last night. But we had leftovers. We had leftovers last what night. What do you do with leftover beef and cheddar? Well, I put them in the fridge last night, and yeah. this morning I got up and I cut them into small pieces, laid them in a pan, I put, I stirred up about a dozen eggs, yeah. and put a little salt and pepper in the eggs, put them over top of the beef and cheddars, and put them in the oven for about 30 minutes, and sprinkle a little cheese on them, and here we have breakfast. And what is this called? This is just an egg bake with the beef and cheddar brats. And it's great for, you know, a group of guys going to deer camp or group whatever. Guys or cook, a, cook some extras and make this in the morning. Cook some extras and moms that have kids that they have to get ready for school in the morning. It's something real simple they can whip together, throw in the oven, get the kids ready, and off to school they go. And again, Johnsonville beef and cheddars. And folks, they're pre-cooked, 100% cuts of premium pork, and then they infuse them with cheddar cheese. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try my egg bake. There you go. Oh, man. That is outstanding. Again, that's called an egg bake. It's an egg bake with the beef and cheddar um, Johnsonville brat. And the, 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 the cheese in the brat helps out with the egg bake, too. That is outstanding. Hey, folks, look for Johnsonville Better with Cheddar beef and cheddars at your favorite retailer today. Yeah, D, our last day of muskie fishing up here on Leech Lake, and uh, Jason, you're taking Riley's spot, but you're Riley's dad. I am Riley's dad, yes. As a, as a matter of fact, we ice fished with you last year, and we're looking at it right now. You caught the biggest bluegill ever caught on our show, and that baby was 11 inches. 11 inches, that, yes it was. That was yep. quite the day, huh? That was a fun day. Well, I'll tell you what, we've been fishing this morning for a couple hours but it has been just plain tough on leech lake the last couple weeks huh yeah it's been a slow couple weeks with the musky action uh, walleyes have been okay but muskies they they're not liking what's happened here um, i was explaining earlier about the water temps right it's the same shallow it's the same 10 feet it's the same 20 feet and you know i think that's a problem yeah you know things are tough when pete's going through his tackle box <laughs> trying to figure something out right <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of tough right now i'm staring into my lake woods waiting for something to leap out at me well hey what do we got going the minnows hey way to go you got him pete yep all uh, right might be a walleye folks Let's see, not a musky for no, sure, right? It's not a musky, but it's a fish. It's alive. No, that's cool. And uh, it really pays this time of year, folks, as we talked about earlier, to run that live bait. Do you need a net there, Peter? No, oh, that's a nice walleye there, buddy. Can probably just grab them. Yeah, okay. No, that's awesome, pal. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you were getting concerned that nothing was biting for a while, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was complaining a little. No, they're beautiful walleyes here. And, you know, you and I have fished Leech Lake long enough to know that the walleye population is really back strong, isn't it? Yeah, and they're nice fish. I mean, uh, all three that we've caught have been really, really nice. I mean, this is not a super fat fish, but really nice fish. Well, we might be getting our walleye rods out. Yeah, yeah, we can fish them right here. We don't have to go anywhere else. Folks, it's time now to announce this week's winners of the Fleet Farm John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2023 Fishing Contest. This week's first winner is Cheryl Schultz of Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, caught this 10-inch bluegill on Found Lake using a minnow. Tom Wenlatt of McGuanago, Wisconsin, caught this 13-inch perch on Leech Lake using a worm. 
Wayne Hagdorn of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, caught this 57-inch lake sturgeon on the Wisconsin River using a night crawler. Paul Goodell of Middleton, Wisconsin, caught this 40-inch northern on Lake Mendona using a tip-up. And this week's first kid winner is Eli Halla of Amaro, Wisconsin, caught this 15-inch perch on the Bay of Green Bay using a crawler. And Lisa Bramston of Beloit, Wisconsin, caught this 37-and-a-half-inch northern pike on a lake using a tip-up. Each week, I shop online at FleetFarm.com to check out the latest deals. This week, 15% off all waterfowl calls on sale starting at $5.94. And 15% off all waterfowl decoys on sale starting at eleven oh four. I'll tell you what, folks, I've been a proud user of Amsoil for many years. And us sportsmen, a lot of times, not only have a truck, but a boat, an ATV, a snowmobile. And how do you figure out which Amsoil product to use in each machine? Yeah, that can be a challenge sometimes. And, you know, we make it easy. We've got a lookup guide. You just go to Amsoil.com. You put in your vehicle, whatever it may be, whether it's a boat, a wheeler, a truck, a trailer, whatever. Um, you pick out your product. It tells you how much and which product to put in. Real simple. And, folks, to find the Amsoil you want, want, go to amsoil.com. What's the difference between a good net and a great net? Simple. It's all in the features. Fortis nets by Clam Outdoors are tough, safe on fish, easy to use, and a telescoping handle. More about Fortis Nets at ClamOutdoors.com. Meet Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyers. A lot of the people that watch your show, I mean, those are the type of customers and clients that we have, right? I mean, good people, care about their community, they're passionate about the outdoors. That's just been a way to have a bond with somebody in a relationship. To truly tell a, a client's story to a jury or a judge and be persuasive, I really think you gotta be able to walk in their shoes and, and, and be able to explain why what happened to them matters. Here, Pete feels like a little northern pike. Like Northern pike. Northern. Yeah, there we go. Well, whatever, you know. <laughs> oh my God, he hoists it right in. Yeah, fish is a fish. No, folks, I'll tell you what. We had to actually give up on the muskies. I mean, uh, we got the warm weather coming in this afternoon. The wind is calming down, so this happens occasionally, Pete. We don't catch enough muskies. We're going to have to switch to try to catch in walleyes, right? Yeah, I actually had to acquiesce and say we I guess we should fish walleyes. <laughs> oh, hey Pete, I think hey. you might have gotten us on a walleye or two and I hope it's not another pike. Uh oh I seen it up the Oh surface. really yeah well, we'll, we'll <laughs> see here it? Jason what it is buddy. <laughs> Well, let's see what we got here, Pete. Hey, Petey! Nice! Hey, you got nice a walleye. walleye! We caught something we're fishing for. It was a walleye. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, folks, that's really a perfect eating size walleye right there. And thankfully, Pete had an one jig left in his boat from last spring because he doesn't usually carry his walleye gear but thanks to jason we went over to his boat and got some walleye rods so we're going to try and finish this show ah pd another we one on the time, jig minnow. you're on a roll i don't know this feels pretty decent buddy the last one was about 16 17. Well, i gotta get out the musky net it's a walleye oh all right i'll tell you what these rods are fun to use <laughs> you want me to get my uh, sucker net? Oh, there we go. You nailed that plastic. Look at that. It. Where's that jerk minnow down there, Pete? Look at that. It is down there. Yeah. Now, uh, Pete, when you get a walleye like this and you're fishing a weed edge and, and a sandbar, do you put spot lock on and then just fan cast the area? Yeah, it's always a good idea, John, to spot lock for a little bit, fan cast all around. But then, you know, if nothing's going on, start moving again. Keep looking for fish. Walleyes are saving our muskies. Trip. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. <laughs> I know. It really is. Ooh, Ooh I got one on too, but let's film header. yours first. Let's film yours first. I got one too. Oh we my goodness. We got a triple going. Oh, I got a walleye too. <laughs> this side. Uh... Oh, yay on the yay, Livingston. Yay, yay on the Livingston. 
things till you flip them in. Come on. You think so? Oh, absolutely. Ah, hey, right. way to go. Now we got one on up here. Got okay. A double. Let, uh, yeah, let's see. Oh. Well, actually, whoa. Mine's a northern. Look at the size of that perch, though. <laughs> so we got and, everything. And, we hey, got a that, perch. He's got a nice pike on there. Oh, but, he got my jig. Oh, jeepers. Oh, well, we oh. got two out of three. Hey, but Pete, look at the size of that perch. That's, That's a nice better. perch. Yeah. Hold your walleye up again. Now, that was remarkable there, Pete, putting spot lock, and, and you saw those fish on the Mega Live. Yeah, I had actually dropped a waypoint earlier, and then we saw a few more, and now I've been working back and forth in where we saw some fish. We had a great time with everyone that came to the new Fleet Farm store in Muskego, Wisconsin last Saturday. And people wanted to dance for the show. Hey, 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 John Gillespie. Spring walleye fishermen, grab some of these. They're an incredible bait. Kalins, rattling Google eye, hair jigs. Right there, Ryan. Ooh, that one pounded it. Wow, dude, that is my first cast. Beautiful walleye right there on the hair, man. Perky, lively, smacking hair jigs. Doesn't get much better, does it? Big, fat, chunky spring walleyes. Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So John, you haven't heard of Brian's Custom Steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's Custom Steps, call 920-315-0333. Thanks, buddy for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Well, Pete, I guess uh, we're going to wrap this trip up because the walleye stopped biting, but uh, you know, this is a good dose of reality for the folks that watch our show. You know, when you're handed these weather conditions, man, it, it, it's, it's impossible. That wind going down is horrible in the middle of the day, and then when you get these temperatures rising fast, we've literally in the last uh, hour that it went flat, hour and a half, whatever it is, the surface temp has jumped up three and a half degrees when that water's heating up when the fish are in fall obviously they're used to things cooling down and it's to me it's worse than a nasty cold front when you get this high heat well thanks pete and folks that is our show for today please join us next week i don't know we're going to fish yet we will find a place somewhere until then i'm john gillespie hoping to see you enjoying john gillespie's waters and woods